Hi, welcome to my show. My guest today is Deborah Epstein, and I met uh, Deborah uh, because, she, well, we were connected on Facebook, <laughs> and um, then okay. she invited me to be um, on her summit, which she's going to talk about today, her creative summit, uh, which I'm very excited about about is going to launch um, on the January 27th. Uh, Deborah is a visionary artist, shamanic practitioner, and uh, she, her work embodies uh, the healing work that she does. So Deborah, welcome to my show. Thank you, Liam. It's so wonderful to be here and work with you again. I had a really great experience with you and uh, we were interviewing. We had a really juicy conversation. So yes, we did. Yes. Back at it again with you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I am very happy that I'm able, you know, for the internet and other works because you're you're not in the studio right now. But uh, luckily that we could, we were able to connect because I was very touched by the what the kind of work that you do uh, by your artwork, and uh, I want you to talk about the summit because I when you reached out about it I just thought it's such great work that you're putting and I know you've put a lot into it mm. you're having um, 21 people that you're interviewing but I want you to discuss mm -hmm. this and uh, in your own words and how it, why and how it came about mm -hmm. yeah so um, my passion are is a couple of things art is one thing um, and interconnection is another and not just interconnection with ourselves as human beings, you know, reconnecting our uh, ourselves with the earth and, you know, fostering and growing our relationship with the earth um, and how we treat her, um, but also as a people one to one and how we interrelate and interconnect with with each other and becoming um, Yeah, more more connected and of like mind um, within that being totally unique. So it's in, in the realization that we are inextricably and inherently connected um, and bringing just more awareness to that. And I think a way of doing that is to realize that we are powerful creators, whether we are artists or writers or, you know, you know, working at a, you know, working at Subway or working as a as a waitress or, you know, working in corporate, whatever our jobs may be, that it's our uh, inherent um it's in it's it's part of who we are. We're creators, and becoming more conscious of that, I think, would help build uh, connections with each other in how we want to create the the world. Like just seeing that we have that power. Yes, I I like what you just said. The types of different jobs that you mentioned, because it's not necessarily only trying to disconnect from the world and living that way, but it's really honoring uh, the the job positions that we have, whether it's a stay at home mom or wherever we're working, what, whether we're working at the bank or it's a corporate job or whatever kind, it's kind of, it's honoring that. Um, and the creative force helps us better, uh, like we relax into the positions that we already do have, um, even change our perspective. I know uh, when I went on your website, I saw this interesting course that you have. I'd like you to also talk a little bit about that um, and if it's whether it's available for people uh, that are out of state. Um, yours, uh, you're in what state? I'm in uh, Sedona, Arizona. Okay. And yeah. so the course that you offer, can you tell us a little bit about that and whether it's available to for people out, you know, outside of Arizona? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, actually, that's my goal as I um, increase my business is um, to um, so the the class itself, it's it's more of a one to one retreat style healing experience. Um, the way I'm going to expand on that is making it more for more accessible to do it in groups and to teach people how to connect with one one another using uh, the modalities that um, are in the one to one. So basically the one-to-one -one, uh, healing experience is you, you come to Sedona, um, you pack your bags and you come by yourself. So you're going oh. on a journey. <laughs> I, you, I like it yeah. already. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so it's an, it's an inner journey that I'm, I serve as your guide through the process of going in. And healing is uh, really interesting to me because it's, there's a, you know, we think we have a certain 
thought about that in this country and that it, healing is more like fixing. And to me, healing is about the journey in and being able to see what the woundings have been in our past. We all have them. It's the things that keep us disconnected from one another or checked out or in a fight or flight response or a freeze response. So we're not engaging in life when, we, when we're stuck in those um, fight or flight responses. Um, we're always living in fear. We're living from a place of fear and we can't create when we're in fear. We, mm-hmm. our, brain, our brain chemistry is just doesn't work that way. Um, so my program with people is to bring them in, uh, to a safe environment where they're, they, they're fully in and they're not in for me, they're in for them. Um, and I, I support their journey. Um, the way we do that is we work at my Mesa and a Mesa is, um, and I think, you know, this cause you've, <laughs> you've taken some classes with our teacher, Don Oscar, mm-hmm. right? So, um, uh, a Mesa is, uh, it's in a Peruvian tradition. Uh, my teacher is uh, Don Oscar Miro Casada, and he teaches uh, Pachicuri uh, Mesa tradition of cross-cultural shamanism. And what that is, is born out of uh, his training with two lineages. He was initiated uh, as he was growing up in Peru uh, by two uh, powerful shamans. Um, from two different lineages. That's kind of unheard of in that culture too. Usually it's just you have one teacher, one, one, you know, one, uh, uh, one lineage that you're initiated into. So he's uh, brought together two, those two and added in uh, transpersonal psychology and alchemy and a bunch of different uh, concepts, sacred geometry into the Mesa practice itself. So the mesa is basically, it's a a ground cloth with um, medicine pieces that are uh, initiated into the medicine of the different directions. So the south, the west, the north, the east, and then the center, which is uh, what we call the axis mundi, which is ourselves. And so it's set up in a, a sacred spiral. And each piece on there has a job, and then it's initiated into you as your medicine. So it becomes your... A uh, place of operating. It's like it's <laughs> been told it's like the operating system for the universe. You know, you with yourself. It's like the control system. So when uh, so it's about the practice of you developing a relationship with your medicine pieces, and that elevates the ground. So it's already in a morphic field and trained into those and trained into those two um, lineages that go back you know, 5,000 or so years. So it holds great power and great medicine. And it's very transformative. Even if you just sat in front of it and meditated every day, it starts to work with you. Um, So that is uh, what I do with people when they come in is I have them sit at the Mesa and we connect and we have them create uh, intention, a healing symbol and, um, and, and get on board with what they're wanting to create for themselves as an experience in the in the five day journey that we take together. And have you found that during those five days? So um, I'm, I'm assuming part of the purpose is that uh, aside from the healing that happens during this process, but also so that they can also learn to take this home with them. Yes. Yeah. To use so yeah. that yeah, it's basically yeah. That's basically the beginning. Um, so it's a combination of using the Mesa and using hands-on healing work that I do. It's called myofascial release. And myofascial release is um, working in the fascial system. So it's an interconnected web that connects everything to everything else. So yes, we have muscles, muscle groups. We have different systems in our body. The fascia is... Uh, it's it's a web that is made of collagen and elastin and it connects every cell to every other cell even the bone cell so it's it's just prevalent in our system i like to call it a fiber optics network it's how um our consciousness gets transported to each and every cell in our in our system it's how cells communicate with one another it's how nutrients are delivered to the cells and it's um it's, it's a major system that hasn't gotten the attention that it needs. Um, so connecting gently with that system, putting some pressure in, generates what's called a piezoelectric effect that gets energetic flow going through the system. And what that does is it, once you kind of connect in 
and start feeling the flow of energy through that system in a very deep way, you will come upon blocks in your system that is um, where holding and bracing patterns happen. So everything that we've experienced in our life, we've experienced through this physical vehicle. And when we were in situations where it was traumatic, even if it's like someone delivered you bad news and you went and got stuck in it, right? Mm -hmm. You didn't know what to do with it at the time. And so you have this little moment of like, oh, freeze response. And then you were able to kind of work through it and assimilate the information and go on with your day. Well, that kind of gets stored in our system and it gets stored in our system um, in a form of a restriction and our body starts to work around that. So this starts happening like when we're really little. And so you, you know, you get to a certain age, you have a lifetime of that. So your sis, your whole body starts to be pulling in. And as you know, like if you were let's say a very tall girl in school and you got made fun of, there's a body posture, right? It's all kind of pulled in and small, you know, cause you're wanting to fit in. So that actually gets locked into your system. So even if you do like shamanic work or you do core belief work, your body's still stuck in this. So the type of body work that I do helps open up the body and helps integrate the changes that you're making on an emotional level, on a spiritual level, and on an intellectual level, and on a subconscious level too. And it helps you be able to kind of get out of the movement patterns that were born out of um, belief systems that no longer serve. So that's one other aspect that we do. And we also use creative expression to help process through what comes up as a result of the body work. And then we go to the mother, we go to the mother, we go to mother earth here in Sedona. The energy here is very powerful. Oh, yes, so we'll I go know. out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're just we'll talking go out about and... that yesterday with other people that, yeah, there is definitely a powerful energy over there to top it off. So aside from yeah. your teachings uh, and your powerful energy then you have the land that you're working with exactly yeah yeah and the land is a very powerful place for people to connect and it's very healing it's so good just to lay on the earth you know um, and connect with her she she wants us to be well you know we're her children and if we're connecting with her and we're receiving healing and taking care of herself and making you know keeping ourselves helping healthy and happy and then we connect that back into her that's the sacred reciprocity that is kind of the, the basis of the Pachacuti Mesa tradition. It's called Aini, and that's today for me, tomorrow for you. And it's about, you know, caring for yourself, yes, but also caring for those around us, for caring for the earth. That's how we create health in our, in, in our culture, or we, we haven't up until now because we've been destroying the earth to, to gain you know, and it's that um, which destroys us in the process. Which, yes, which destroys us in the po in the process. And there's no blame. It was something we moved through. It was information that we had about competition and survival, right? Survival of the fittest. Um, that mentality is gotten us to where we are right now, and it's time to shift that. You know, it's time to shift it from the lessons that we've learned in competition that it just doesn't work. It's not serving us. It's not serving the planet. Yeah, that is what um, there was. We shared my story of how I got involved in uh, shamanic work uh, during mm -hmm. our interview. Um, I'd like to learn how you got involved with shamanic work, and um, I have some of your art pieces that were really. I remember when you were well, they're there, there they are again with <laughs> right now. But I remember that during the interview, my eyes kept going to your artwork because it was uh, in the background as well. And I said yeah. to you, I'd love to interview you about your artwork and your work as yeah. well because I was very um, touched by it and it just captures one's attention. Uh, but I'd like to learn your story of how you got involved in shamanism and how it has affected um, your artwork. And I have some of this mm -hmm. artwork over here, just really amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, that's, yeah, so. that's breaking through. That is, um, yeah, the, all that, that work that um, you're seeing right now is all based on my healing journey. Um, and what I learned through my fascia release with the, the working in the web of the body and that principle of as above, so below, that there's no separation. And um, those, those pieces really speak to or illustrate that interconnection, you know, while also showing energy and, and the physical, the physical body in, in that, how it's like kind of interwoven. And we may not see that, 
but you can definitely um, tap into that and start to feel it. And I think those pieces also kind of highlight and illustrate for people and help the understanding of that connection uh, on, you know, not just within themselves, but like beyond themselves. Um, that one, especially that, that breaking through um, piece right there is, um, you know, there's, there's um, that where the face is kind of coming out, you can just kind of see the web, like almost like restrictive holding back at the same time, everything around that piece is like in uh, conspiring to help that um, breakthrough process right there, you know, or, and to me, breakthrough is more of like an expansion, you know, an opening up of. What about this one right here? Yeah, that one is, um, those are like the ghosts of the past, really. So it's like many faces of pain. So I had a lot of head injuries when I was a child growing up. I was very accident prone, a lot of chaos and uh, running into walls, falling downstairs, car accidents. Um, yeah, dislocated jaw. Um, all Yeah, a lot of stuff. And what that does is when you um, have an accident of that proportion where either you were unconscious or just kind of knocked out of your body, those energetic pieces kind of stay out in your field um, as a way of disconnecting. And then your body kind of starts to form re restrictions around that empty space. And there's usually a belief system or a mes message that goes with that that starts to become part of your operating system. And it, the operating system is like subconscious and under the, under the, under the, the conscious mind. Well, and, and I'm assuming, uh, oh, I'm sorry, yeah. go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Well, I'm assuming that um, you were already doing art before you got involved in the shamanic work and it just kind of took yeah. you to a different, okay. Yeah, so I, I uh, went to Rhode Island School of Design like in my 20s, uh, I think it was like 26 or so. And that was actually where I discovered um, through art that there was uh, something underlying within me. The uh, images that would I, I would create um, there were very painful looking, lots of red, lots of drama, lots of pain. And my painting um, teacher kind of asked me like, where are these images coming from? You know, mm -hmm. what is what is this all about? Um, you're such a such a quiet young woman. <laughs> and it's hard to like, they, they don't match your what I know of you. So that really started that question really started getting me to like, look inward at like, yeah, where were these coming from? Mm -hmm. And I, um, you know, at the time, just kind of often, oh, I'm probably channeling universal pain or something like that. But it, what it really was, was it was my own pain that I was not in touch with. And that that was what launched me into self discovery and inquiry as to like, where are these images coming from? And I actually started using them, I met a really great uh, energy therapist who did core belief work. And we would use um, my more painful images to kind of help us dive deeper into what was really at the root of what was going on with me. And um, that was very, very freeing, but then I still was like really stuck in my body. I was, um, I used to bicycle a lot and I mean like, you know, chronic. I was definitely like using it as a way of escape and I was mm -hmm. totally beating up my body and I got to a point where I was at the gym working out because I could never do enough working out. And um, I was just taking the pin out of the weight machine and moving the, the pinned down a couple levels and I turned my head and my, my neck got stuck. Oh. And that was the, be wow. that was the beginning. I was, it was just frozen. So, um, then I started getting into body work and I started to see the importance of body work. So I got my license to, um, to touch, which was for then, uh, a, a massage therapy license. And while I was in massage therapy school, I saw an ad for John Barnes, my fascia release, and it just resonated off the page. It was like highlighted, like, oh, I got to do this. Mm -hmm. So when I graduated massage school, I took my first MFR class and um, I was just, I fell in love. He was speaking about quantum physics, which I was really into as it relates to the body. I've never heard anybody put all these pieces together. And this work is very shamanic in nature because it deals with soul retrieval without calling it soul retrieval. Because when you mm. open up the body, it gives that opportunity for those pieces that are kind of stuck outside yourself to reconnect with you through the body. So the more I did that work, the more I healed, my body became more fluid. Um, I became much happier. I built a really great business. I was instructing for John for a while and I um, had a goal of moving to Sedona and working for him, which is what I did. 
Um, and, and then, you know, it became time like, okay, you know, I've achieved that goal. There's more, there's more, I need to, more work I need to be doing in the world. And so I left and now this is where I'm at currently right now is, uh, putting these uh, programs together to reach more people through conscious creativity. The shamanism piece came in in around 2015 and it was just, it was the same sort of thing I kept seeing on my Facebook feed, Don Oscar Miro Casada and um, the Condor Medicine. And every time I opened up my Facebook that was there and I'm like, okay, I get the message, I need to listen to this. And um, it was just so very resonant and I just fell in love with this practice it just dovetailed with everything else. It was just like this just natural integration for me. And then uh, I just started to kind of work with it with people um, more in the, ener the energetic sense. And then once I started, once I left Therapy on the Rocks in Sedona and started working with people with the Mesa, that it just kind of unfolded with how beautifully someone can sit in at the Mesa and receive the wisdom of, of that lineage and then apply it in while we work in the body and then it comes out through their artwork and it mm. reconnects them in with the earth you know you you just especially the end part was just really described my experience as well because as i had shared with you uh i am a my creative outlet is the is writing and that's like what my skill yeah. and this is what i'm called to do um, and there was uh, blocks and it was because it was associated, like you said, with certain traumas from childhood. And once you let go of that, it's incredible how your creativity takes off. Um, and, and parts of the teachings, we had to do our work. And to me, I was so used to uh, working with words that it just kind of felt like, oh, art, I don't know about this. Like, how is that going to serve me? And it just kind of, I was... Let's just say I wasn't really excited <laughs> to participate in that. Um, but then I bought all the necessary stuff, and I thought, you know, I'm going to make uh, a sacred um, activity of it and included my kids with it. And I got to tell you, the first painting that I did, I, I wasn't expecting that so much would come out through artwork because, again, I was so used to yeah. word. You know, as a wordsmith, that's what, to me, that's what usually worked. And I thought, oh, this is a totally different type of healing, and this is a totally different side that I'm seeing things, how they're playing and how the energy is coming along. And then, and I remember that year, I uh, this was, I believe, in the third year of, uh, I had a four-year teaching with Lynn v, v. Andrews. And in the third year, we were really heavy on, on artwork and just using colors and things like that. And I am you know, um, really just embrace that after, especially that first experience, I embraced it. And then after that, I saw how art, art helps heal you. So even my recognition of your art pieces, I think it has to do with uh, experimenting with that. So, uh, so I see, you know, what you, what you mean, and I feel like uh, regardless of who was to come and uh, utilize a the services that you offer, um, regardless of their creative aspect, they can still use, uh, it's still, it benefits all creativity, but even if it was just, even your artwork could be a healing, even if they're not, if that's not their focus is, uh, painting and things mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's definitely not like for like becoming an artist and it's, there's so much wounding around us just in the making art and um, my experience growing up is that it's just not valued in school I mean we do it right but there's always the classroom artists and they're allowed to make art and everyone else is kind of like you know not really you know I persisted even though I wasn't the classroom artist you know um, but I always felt like I didn't know enough and it was really I, I delayed going to art school because I felt I wasn't good enough to do it. You know, even mm -hmm. though it was a drive in me, it was a passion in me. <laughs> I felt like I needed permission from somebody outside of me to go do it. And then once I was in school, I was like, this is so silly. That's why I'm here. I'm here to learn, you know, and to develop these skills and to expand on them so that I can get my vision that's kind of locked inside of me out, you know, out into the world. 
And so like that's part of what happens in a in in the uh, sacred medicine journey that I offer is that will come up, you know, where, you know, you put a blank piece of paper on a wall and like say play and it's like, oh, my God, I have to play. You know, there's so much yeah. writing on it. And it's like when you boil, I mean, I go through it when, with every piece that I start, you know, mm -hmm. it's not painful, but it's like it's such a metaphor for life when you're creating, yes. you know, in a painting, you know, because you have to really come come into your center and let go of who's going to see it in the future you know let go of all of the judgments because when we were in school creating there was always judgment is it good is it bad art doesn't have that to it art is expression and expression doesn't need the judgment because the judgment is what closes us down and it stops us from from living in our authenticity and it's just i find it um interesting that you were hesitant about uh, studying art because you didn't think uh, you were good enough. And then now you have a summit, uh, Life is Art um, Conscious Creative <laughs> Summit, which is going to be, like I said, it's going to launch on January 27th for 21 days where you interview 20 different people, 21 different people who have, um, who are in similar fields and how they use creativity for healing and creating. Um, so uh, I, I will be re-announcing that. So, and then there will be links. So I, uh, it's a free summit. I, I highly encourage people to check it out. Uh, I've seen some of the speakers that you have interviewed. Um, they're all amazing. And um, we mm -hmm, just yeah. have a couple of minutes. And if you, any last words that you want to say before we go? Yeah, um, I just speak to the into the summit a little bit. Yeah, the we have a lot of creatives, um, not just artists, um, people who do movement, people mm. who use music, you know, that there's, uh, and writers and, and, um, yeah, writers, musicians, mo movement therapists. And I even have a couple people on who have, um, used cr like their creativity to overcome an obstacle in their life and how that moved, how creativity moved them through and how it, so it kind of demonstrates conscious creativity and action, mm -hmm. um, like taking an adversity and turning it into something that serves the world. Um, yeah. So I'm really proud of, uh, I mean, everyone on the yeah, summit I know and that you put yeah, a lot of how that's come together. This. Yeah. You've put a lot of work into this, but it's well worth it. And I'm going to be watching these other yeah. speakers as well and uh, right. I'm, I'm thank you again for having me participate in this i feel very honored um and everybody else check it out i will be uh, including it on um all the social media as a reminder um i i appreciate you making the time today to come on my show i hope that one day i can interview you in person <laughs> <laughs> Either oh, that by would be me wonderful here, here in Sedona. You, you <laughs> You're more than welcome to come as a guest in Michigan as well. <laughs> thank you very uh, much. Great. Deborah. Well, thank, thank you, you so much for having me. Thanks. Have a great day. Thank you, everybody, for watching.